first things first, right off the bat, I'd like you to remember that GoGo Nihon is a free service, and where it provides a lot for you, it will not babysit you the entire way through the process. It will give you a path to walk down, however it will not hold your hand down the path. I'm quite new on reviews, so I will construct it like this. Each point that I state, I will then rate on a would I use this service again type method. Then at the end, tally up which I would and which I wouldn't. To help with the construction of this video, I looked up multiple other reviews on Gogonihon on other people's videos. There are a lot of negative reviews, however I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt considering they're all made around three years ago, all the negative ones anyway, so I'm guessing they either grew from their mistakes and learned from it. All the people making these reviews are of high standards. Prior to speaking with Gogo Nihon for the first time, I had no knowledge on this sort of situation. I have never studied abroad before. So like any interested person, I asked a lot of questions. And I noticed a lot of bad reviews were usually on things like Gogo Nihon not informing them of certain things. But you have to remember, you can't just sit back and let them do everything for you. You have to ask these questions. If you think about it logically, what are you going to do when you get off at the airport? Don't know? Ask. Before actually getting there. So I actually failed to enter a school successfully twice in a row before actually getting into a school. First reason due to lack of funds. Second, I delivered the documentation slightly too late. Which reminds me, get ready to provide everything but blood type. They want to know everything about you. The main reason I failed to deliver the documentation on time are for reasons like they wanted to see my primary school graduation documentation. However, my primary school doesn't actually exist anymore. So I had to travel back to my hometown and search for these documents wherever they would be at this point in time. Also, the line of colleges that I went to are sort of scattered around the area as I never really stayed in one place. And it took a long time travelling from destination to destination only to figure out that that college has closed down and this college has closed down. So much has changed and it made it very difficult to actually obtain all of the information they wanted. And I ended up being too late by a single document that evidently I got wrong and had to take back and replace with a different document. However, upon applying for the next term, I didn't need to go back and retrieve any documentation again. They just kept what they already had on file and then shifted it over to the next term. Not once did I need to replace a file because they'd misplaced it. So the safety and security on your files are, are at a decent standard. One of the other problems I had was I funded myself to go and they wanted me to have a financial supporter. That part was difficult and the obtaining of certain documents was very difficult. However, on the flip side, all the documentation they did keep, they kept well. They made it very clear on what documents they needed. Bearing in mind, I don't have a scanner slash printer. So every time I needed to print out something of theirs to fill in, to scan, to send back to them, or every document that I needed to obtain and then scan to send to them. I needed to go down to the public library, which is a good hour away walk. So every time I received an email from them needing me to do something else, I couldn't just sit at home and do it all. I had to really work for it. However, would I use this service again in hindsight? Yeah, yeah, I would. However, side note for Gogo Nihon, if any of you are willing to take suggestions, if it's possible, get hold of a blank form that the student will need and then send them a picture of that so they know roughly what it is that they need. Because the reason my final document was incorrect was because I delivered something that they did not recognise. It, it had the correct information on it, however they did not recognise the layout of the form that I gave them. Because I failed twice to get in, I've actually been doing this for a little while now, it's been about a year and a half trying to get in. However, like I stated at the beginning of the video, I didn't actually know anything before applying, which is my problem. I didn't do my own research into the schools. All I did was provide them with what at the time was my Japanese level, and they provided me with a school that they thought they recommended for me. However, now at this point, I wish that I chose my own school because I don't want to go to the one that I'm now going to attend. It's mainly my fault, because I didn't do the research in the beginning prior to speaking to Gogo Nihon. And because they know more than me, I just accepted what it was that they said and then went with that one. Because I was of low level at the time, they thought a 
very slow paced school would be good for me. However, not only do I completely disagree, but I've continued self-studying since a year and a half ago and I'm a lot better than I was a year and a half ago. So I kind of wish I realised this closer to actually completing all of the documentation and actually going for a different school. I mean, they say they're all right with helping you choose out a school. However, choosing a low intensity course for me, I don't feel was the correct course. So on this service, I'm going to say no, I would not use it in hindsight because I would suggest to everybody watching that you do your own research and pick out your own school because that was my fault, not theirs really. However, in hindsight, I would not use that service. Please research everything yourself as well. Speaking of contacting Gogo Nihon, I emailed with possibly four different members of the Gogo Nihon team, and all of them seem very nice and respectable. However, Stephanie is a main squeeze. She is so cool. She has been like super duper helpful for all of it. Stephanie, if you see this, you should tell your boss to give you a raise. You deserve it. The emailing process was a little bit frustrating at times, considering it's a three day reply, and especially on the time I delivered all my documents late, I was really pushing the due date, and I obviously failed to deliver all the documents on time. So the three day reply can get a little bit stressful, especially if there was one thing on the last email that you didn't understand and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not too sure I quite get what you mean by this. And then you have to wait three days on that reply to understand what was said in the email. However, they do have a peak time where they reply with one day replies, which is around the term times, the term starts um, because I failed to get in twice, I obviously know where the term starts are, so around the term start times, they usually reply quicker, which is good of them. Three days is a little off, it's respectable. I mean, you can always rely on them to reply within three days. I believe in a year and a half using their service, there have been maybe two or three times when they have gone over their expected three day reply and on the fourth day I've just sent them an email saying regarding my previous email I'm not sure if you received it or not therefore here is a copy of it and then I've just copied and pasted the previous email and then usually the day after they get back to me. I understand they have a lot to do. They they work closely with Borderless House and while emailing with Borderless House usually it's a one day reply with them. The school itself was a one to two day reply Gogo and Hon have a three day reply. However, it's still quite a reliable service. One of the less positive reviews that I saw of Gogo and Hon was that when they don't know the answer to a question, they guess with the reply, or they generally don't reply, which I personally didn't have that problem, and I was with them for quite a long time. So that was either because the review was dated back in 2010 and they've grown from that or I was quite lucky with that. However, would I confidently contact Gogo Nihon again in hindsight? Yeah, yeah I would. The website isn't actually something that I spent a lot of time on. I found them through YouTube. However, on the main page, it's laid out quite nicely in the respect of Everything you could need is right at the top. And then there's a big green contact us button. So straight away you know what you're supposed to do. The camera just like stopped focus for some reason. Focus, 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 me, yes, me, 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 me. Awesome. I decided to explore the website after deciding to create a review, just to speak about the website a little bit. And I noticed a lot of it is pushing otaku culture. Personally not a large fan of otaku style culture, I'm not the biggest fan of anime or manga or um, you know all the other things. I have read manga and I have watched anime so I feel as though I do have the right to uh, make that opinion. I'm not just judging it for the sake. So a lot of the website I didn't use or explore. However it is laid out very nicely for those that do like it and it does still seem easy to use and you can find what it is that you need to find. The only thing I don't like about the website that I found, side note for Gogo Nihon if you're actually listening and you take suggestions, events tab. On the main page there's an events tab. If you click on the events tab it directs you to their Facebook page. Now I'm not a fan of websites redirecting you to other websites, I don't like that. If you are to click on events, if it took you to 
another page on the Gogo Nihon website stating more can be found out on the Facebook page and then a link to the Facebook page, that would be fine. However, I don't like being sent to other websites without knowing about it. Just a side note, apart from that, would I use the website in hindsight? I mean, they have access to like eight different languages on the website. The main feature the website holds is contacting them, which is right at the beginning as well. Yes, I would use the website in hindsight. The website in hindsight. I would use the website in hindsight. Ha! Accommodation. I obviously haven't actually moved in yet, so I can't really judge too much on the atmosphere, etc. What I can judge the accommodation on is choosing the accommodation. I chose shared house because I feel as though it's the most cost efficient, most sociable, and most fun, especially for video creation, as I'm definitely not stopping that while I'm there. The other forms of accommodation that they have is host family, however, it's extremely expensive. And I've heard a lot of horror stories about the host families as well. You might wanna look them up there, they're quite interesting. I would recommend Digital Mimi's video. However, I wouldn't doubt if you'd already seen it because it hit a seven digit view count. And I think the other option is just a standard flat. Now, some of the poor reviews on the shared houses, which I thought was just amusing, is when they were complaining about there being no cleaning service. I'm sorry it was too much hassle to take your maid with you from home. I'm sorry, but if you're not ready to clean up after yourself, you're not ready to move out, let alone move to another country. Another big problem that I have with Borderless House. I know this isn't a review on Borderless House, however, this is just something that has become a problem for me. See, I can move in when I meet the landlord, they check my ID, go, yep, yeah, you're the geese that we need, and then give me a key and I can move in. They can't just let a random person who says they are who they are to move in. However, this is the problem. The landlord is only available from about 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m every day. That's fantastic, they say. Every day? Well, yeah, that's brilliant until your flight gets in at 10 p.m. My first night in Japan, I am homeless. In all seriousness, I don't mind too much. I mean, it's an adventure, isn't it? It'd be a good video to capture for YouTube. And hey, I'll play by your rules. And I'll win. You can see how this can be extremely problematic, and I'm very uncomfortable with this happening. However, there is no way around it. This is what must happen. Considering that this isn't Gogo Nihon's fault, would I use their services to apply for living in hindsight? I believe I would. I feel as though getting in touch with host families would be too difficult to do if you wasn't in touch with some sort of agency like Gogo Nihon is. Gogo Nihon? Gogo Nihon. So yes, I will use them in hindsight. However, be careful with Borderless House if you choose Borderless House. All in all, a ratio is four pros to one con. So thank you Gogo Nihon for your services and thank you viewers for watching. If there's something you want to know that I might be able to help with then comment and I hope you make the right decision with going to Japan. Unless you know you're that rich kid that wants a maid with them the whole time then don't go. I've been like postponing this video for a long time because I've had a throat problem recently. Ha <laughs> ha!